Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Melanie's Math. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the commutative, associative, and distributive properties. These are three basic arithmetic properties. And if you wanna follow along with the worksheet that we have, you can find it at the first link in the description below. So first up, let's take a look at the commutative property or the commutative law. And that says that we can swap numbers Okay, or change the numbers out and still get the same answer when we add. And so I'll show you an example of that. I like to think of, to remember the commutative property. If you think of commuters, those are people that travel from place to place for work. And so that's sort of what you're gonna be seeing here. So let me give you an example of when we add, we can use the commutative property. In other words, if I have two numbers, I'm just gonna make up A and B we get the same thing when we swap those numbers. That's an example of the commutative property. So for an example, we could do six plus three, and that's gonna give us the same thing if we do three plus six, right? You're gonna get nine either way, okay? But it's also true when we multiply. So for example, if we did, um, how about, uh, well, let's just look at it in terms of letters. So if I had any two numbers, a times B, I would get the same thing if I multiplied B times A. So just as a quick example, if I had uh, two times four, that would be eight. And I would get the same thing if I did four times two, that's also eight, okay? Now it's worth mentioning that this doesn't work with subtraction, okay? And it also doesn't work with division. So you can do this swapping out for addition or multiplication. And that's an example of the commutative property or commutative laws, okay? That one's one of the easiest ones to remember. Associative laws are a little bit different. The associative property or laws says that it doesn't matter how we group the numbers, okay? So it doesn't matter how we group the numbers, for example, when we add. So for example, let's take a look here. If I do A plus B, and I take that whole group and add it to another number, you'd get the same thing even if you regrouped it differently. If I put my parentheses around the B plus C, I'm still gonna get the same final answer. So to put some numbers to that, as an example, let's do six plus three plus four. And uh, let's see, that would be nine plus four is 13. So the final answer here is gonna be 13. And you get the same answer if you regrouped it the differently, right? So if I did the three plus four and got seven, added it to six, it's still 13. You get the same answer either way. So the associative law says it doesn't matter how we group them when we add or when we multiply. So let's do the same kind of thing here, but with multiplication. So if I have a group A times B and I multiply that times C, I'll get the same thing if I group it differently. In other words, if I put the parentheses around the B and the C. So to throw some numbers at this as an example, uh, if I do two times four times three, oh, that's a weird looking three. Okay, I'd get the same thing if I regrouped it like this and put the parentheses around the four and the three. Just to prove that to you, two times four is eight times three is 24, right? But you're gonna get the same thing if you do two times 12 and you're still gonna get 24, okay? Once again, doesn't work with subtraction and it also doesn't work with division. Okay, so far so good. Just re quick recap. Commutative property says you can swap the numbers. Associative property says you can regroup the numbers. But the distributive property is a little bit different. The distributive law says we get the same answer when we multiply a number by a group of numbers added together. So by a group of numbers added together or when we do each multiply separately and then add them, okay? That sounds a little bit weird in person, uh, you know, just to have it written out in words. It's easier if you see it with numbers. So essentially what they're saying is 
if we were to multiply, right, three times the quantity two plus four, we would get the same thing if we did all the multiplication separately and then just added together our answers. So for example, a lot of times in a math class, you'll see this written with little arrows, these little distributive property arrows. And essentially it's saying that if you have a number times a quantity, you can do the individual multiplications and just add them together. So if I work down that left-hand side, uh, two plus four is six, right? So that would be three times six, which is 18. But that's gonna be the same thing if I just did these individually. Three times two is six, three times four is oops, 12, sorry. Is Three times four is 12. And then um, if I added those together, I would also get 18. Okay, so it's just showing you uh, another way to do that. And again, this doesn't work with division. So this is only true kind of for multiplication. Okay, so you can use these laws in all types of contexts. And as you get into some really advanced math, you need to know what you can and can't do. So that's just a quick crash course in commutative, associative, and distributive properties. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.